Now that the frenzy of all the phone launches and the sales have kind of died down, I really wanted to talk about all the great audio products that came our way during this period because I really haven't had a chance to talk to you guys about it. But to do an individual review for all of these products, actually that will take a lot of time and that's like an individual video for each one of them. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So I decided to start a new series. And you know what? I think this will be a really fun one. So what I've gathered are my favorite audio products that I've tested during this period. And I'll be doing like a quick review of each one of them in this video. So there are wired IEMs that start as low as about 2000 rupees and uh, truly wireless earbuds that go up to 25,000 rupees. There's something in it for everyone. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Ashad, you're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed incisive gadget reviews. So I really want to talk about the budget IEM that I was very happy with when I tested it out. And that's the Moondrop Chu. Two or the second edition one. Now, the Moondrop Chu itself was a fantastic product. Please don't snigger at the name. I know that Indians are definitely going to laugh at it, but let's get past that. And the Chu 2 actually builds upon the goodness of uh, the original Chu, and it actually is better in more ways than one. For those who don't know, Moondrop is actually one of the most famous Chinese IEMs out there, and it's kind of like a household name within the audiophile community. In fact, I actually love the brand so much that my daily driver is the Moondrop Blessing 2. So how does Moondrop improve the Chew 2 over the Chew is basically by giving you detachable cables. That's the first important upgrade on this product. And apart from that, you also do get the option to remove the filter and clean it up if it gets dirty. So your performance will become better too. And the quality of the cable, if you look at it, is actually very, very nice. Yes, it does get entangled very easily, but I found that the quality was pretty good. And these are actually metal housings for under rupees 2000. That's really, really good value if you ask me. And one of the things that I really loved about this is that they're extremely comfortable for long listening sessions. So that's good, but you do have to roll it around your uh, ears. So if you're not comfortable with that, then that would be a problem. But otherwise, I really love it. And it does nothing fancy in terms of the driver setup itself. You've got two 10 millimeter dynamic drivers inside each housing, unlike the multi driver setup that you get inside many other brands. For example, KZ does it. Now, the sound signature is definitely more U-shaped now compared to the original Chew and there is a lot of emphasis in the bass region. And you know what I noticed with the sound signature is that there's a lot of grunt in the sub bass region. So if you go really, really low, there is definitely a lot of impact that you can hear. And this definitely helps if you're listening to songs like BTSTU by J. Paul or if you're listening to something like Limit to Your Love by uh, James Blake, you can really feel that sub bass on a pair of IEMs under 2K, which is very, very good. Thankfully, the prominence of the bass and the bass impact is not so much that it bleeds into the mids. In fact, it lets the mids do its own thing. And I'm really, really happy to report that. So if you're listening to any music that has bass and a lot of mids as well, for example, vocals, they actually do come through, but the female vocals do sound more prominent than the male vocals do. And the reason for this is the emphasized low treble region. The treble is really impactful and it's shiny and it sort of comes through. And for anybody who's actually sensitive to treble sounds, they might find it a little too much for their taste, but I loved it because it gives you refinement. It makes instruments like cymbals sound really, really good. In the song Chain by Fleetwood Mac, at about the 54 second mark, there is that, you know, distinctive treble hit that comes through and it sounds so good. I was like, am I listening to these on a pair of 2000 rupee earphones? But it can be unnerving for some. I loved it. My only gripe with the Chew 2 is that the sound stitch could have been slightly wider and that's where the 7 hertz Sand Note 0, which is also under rupees 2000, does a better job. Having said that, in every other parameter, whether it's detailed retrieval, whether it's bass, whether it's treble, all of that, I think the Chew 2 does it way better. So for about 1890, this feels like a no-brainer, really. You should just pick it out if you're starting out your audiophile journey. This is definitely a product you must consider. All right, moving on to the next product. Please don't mind me if I fawn over this product, literally, because I, I don't know, I mean, this is just so good, man. So good. So this is the Truthier collaboration with Clinical, and it's called the Zero Red. It's a weird name, but I'm absolutely in love with it. In fact, it's actually so good for a 5,000 rupee product that it made me forget my 30,000 rupee moon drop blessing too. And that's kind of weird, no? So what is this Clinical, you ask me? Well, Clinical is actually the name of a reviewer who's very, very popular within the audiophile community. And he actually makes collaborative, uh, you know, IEMs with a lot of brands, including Truthier and Moondrop as well. Now, what Clinical has done with the Zero Red is that he has moved away from the Harman target curve, which has a bit of a bad rep now. A lot of people don't like it. I still like it. But he has moved away from that to his own, uh, you know, reference target curve, that is the Clinical IEM target curve. What that means is that you get more of a neutral sounding sort of pair of uh, IEMs, 
with a little bit of a base shelf, which is very, very nicely tuned. And you know what's good about the Zero Red is that you can actually use these as your reference grade IEMs, budget reference grade IEMs. They're properly clinical in nature. So yeah, so it may not be enjoyable, but they're very clinical and detailed. So you know, when I was testing these, I was really surprised by the way it could maintain the uh, you know tonality and the balance of all of the instruments that were playing in the song, along with the electronic soundscape and Ishita's very beautiful vocals in Garage by Don Bart and Ishita. And it sounds really, really good. It's a, it's a very full, rich kind of sound. And of course, very neutral too, so you can actually use it as reference. You get the breadth of the soundscape, you get the depth of it as well, with great imaging and really good, really decent sound staging as well. But I know that a lot of people don't want a reference grade sounding IEM and they would prefer a musical sounding one, for example, the Moondrop Aria, which is slightly more expensive than this. But still, I mean, if you want something in your collection that you want to use as the reference point for testing other products, then you can definitely get this. Also, the build quality is fantastic. The cable is actually very good. It doesn't tangle as easily as the uh, Moondrop Chew 2 does. But yeah, I mean, this is very, very good. Great value for 4999. And I would recommend it easily to everybody. It's a steal at this price. All right, moving on to two wired IEMs to the wireless category. And this is the Oppo Enco Air 3 Pro. And I know that I'm re-recommending these because I've already done a review for them. And if you haven't watched that yet, a link should pop up right now. Go check it out. But the Enco Air 3 Pro is so good that it deserves recommendation. Again, under rupees 5,000, easily one of the best truly wireless earbuds out there. So to give you a quick gist, it's refined. It sounds clinical. It sounds detailed. Uh, especially for a pair of 5,000 rupee truly wireless earbuds. Plus it supports the lossless LDAC Bluetooth codec and it's got great ANC as well. The fit is fantastic. It's very comfortable too. I really like it. And you've got support for Google's fast pair protocol as well. What else could you really want for rupees 5,000? It's very good. Like, I mean, it, it's an instant recommendation from me. Something that I really wanted to bring up again in this video as well. I know that a lot of folks keep asking me this for the same budget. If I had say, for example, 5,000 rupees, should I pick up something like the Oppo Enco Air 3 Pro or should I pick up something like the Truthier Clinical Zero Red? Well, if you ask me, I would say pick up a wired option because wired products generally last you longer. Also, they have detachable cables, so the cables can be replaced if they go bad. So all of that is definitely useful. Uh, with truly wireless earbuds, if you're spending on truly wireless earbuds, don't spend a penny more than 10,000 rupees because the batteries inside are going to go bad at some point and you know, one of the sides will not work after some time. All right, moving on to the next product. Now this one is actually something that launched a little while ago, but I really wanted to bring this up it is the Sony Link Buds S. And there is a reason for why I'm bringing this up. It's because what happened with the Link Buds S is that I invariably would end up reaching for them when I had a flight to catch or, you know, when I had to go somewhere. And the reason for that is the Link Buds S is one of the most comfortable, tiny, tiny pair of truly wireless earbuds. Once you wear them in your ears, you completely forget that they actually are there. It feels like it's a part of your body. It's that good. Plus the case is tiny. It just goes anywhere. I really love it. I really like what Sony's done with the design and it's very, very good. Apart from that, it's got almost as good ANC as the Sony WH-1000XM4 or the 1000XM5. It's not there, but it does ANC well. And you've got that active ambient sound mode, which figures out if you're sitting or standing and all of those, you know, flagship great features that you get with Sony headphones with the Headphones Connect app that is uh, possible on these as well. Now, with respect to the sound signature, of course, this is definitely not audiophile grade, but what it is, it's warm and it's like a, you know, like a cushion that wraps you around. So essentially, if you're listening to something ambient, something more mellow, like Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence by Ruichi Sakamoto, you will absolutely be fine with the sound of the Link Buds S. And you can keep playing music uh, on these for as long as you want. And it's very, very comfortable too. The more I think about the Link Buds S, I feel like they are a, like, you know, sort of like an all-rounder. And currently they're available for about 12,000 rupees, 12,500 rupees on Amazon. But during the sale, I think they were going for under rupees 9,000. And if anybody picked up for th that price, I think you really got a good deal out of it. But if you want something that is more audiophile grade and sounds really, really good and sounds rich and detailed, go for the Oppo Enco X2. But if you want something that's more of an all-rounder, go for the Link Buds S. Okay, moving on to the next product. It's, when it came to us, it came as a bit of a surprise to me. These are the Sonic Lamb headphones. So what's the USP of the Sonic Lamb headphones, if you ask me? Well, these are completely made in India. Not that I want to propagate made in India products per se, or that, you know, it matters if a product is made in India or not, but this is a good product made in India and definitely needed attention as well. And why do I say it's a good product worth recommending is because they're trying something different with the tech used. 
uh, within the headphones itself. So essentially what you get with the Sonic Lamp headphones are two drivers. You get a dynamic driver and you get a body conduction driver. So Sonic Lamp calls it an impulse driver. What this impulse driver does is that it creates that physical sensation of sound through a mechanical impulse with body conduction. I mean, it gets a little technically complex, but essentially what that means is that these are subwoofers for your head. Yeah, I mean, it's rumbly, like proper, proper rumbly. And the bass response is something else, absolutely something else actually. And you know, at first when I heard them, it was kind of disorienting because I didn't expect this. I mean, I'm like, what? How do they get a subwoofer kind of feedback on the head? Also, your head kind of rattles as well, but they've done a really good job with it. But when I started for the first time, the bass impact was a bit too much. So much so that I couldn't hear the rumble or the you know voice of the person saying hear the rumble in the song Rumble by Skrillex because the subway's impact was a lot. There was proper rumble that was masking the vocals. But that's because it was set in something called the beast mode. So actually, if you look at it over here, there is like this slider. And when you switch it, it actually switches between four modes. So there's beast, immerse, feel and hear. Four different modes. So the sound signature changes accordingly and the bass sort of uh, keeps lowering itself uh, as you change the modes. So the feel mode has the lowest impact of bass and the beast mode has the most impact of it. So I use the immerse mode the most because if I was listening to something that was more EDM or rock, for example, uh, you know, Farewell by, for Now by Greta Van Fleet or something from Tech Panda like Dua, all of that, I would use the immerse mode. But if I was listening to anything more ambient, more soft, more mellow, I would switch to the hear mode. And that would be enough because, you know, the bass wasn't as impactful and the bass would be reduced as well. Although having said that, don't expect to be too detailed or resolving. It's detailed enough, it's good enough, and don't expect the sound stage to be really wide as well. For that, you will have to get something open back, like for example, the Grado SR125, X, or you can get something close back like the DT, the Bay Dynamic DT770 Pro as well, which is, which is of course, these are very, very popular headphones that a lot of people use. But the tech that's there and the sound signature that you get with it, uh, it works for certain genres, especially uh, if you're looking at EDM and rock. And if you're watching movies or if you want the impact of bass when you're watching movies or playing games, then that's good as well. Having said that, there are certain concerns that I had with these headphones. For example, the padding on the headband is not very good, so it's not very comfortable. The clamping force is a little too tight, so it could have been lighter that would have been better for sure and the buttons are very soft and mushy they could have had better tactile feedback hopefully uh, you know Sonic Lamp is taking all of the feedback and building a better pair of their headphones for the next iteration but yeah I mean I would give it a solid 7.5 out of 10 good enough and great attempt from an Indian brand all right finally let's talk about um, a 25,000 rupee pair of uh, truly wireless earbuds it's the Sony WH-1000XM5, sorry, WF-1000XM5. I hate Sony's naming convention. They really need to change it soon. So yeah, WF-1000XM5. So these improve upon every which way when compared to the previous WF-1000XM4, which I was not really a fan of. I actually like these. So what does it improve? So firstly, the design is definitely improved. It's not as big anymore, it's comfortable. And if you look at it, it's actually looks, it actually looks very similar to the Link Buds S. So Sony is now going for a similar design language across its audio products. I'm okay with that, but it doesn't feel very premium. So that's the one thing that you have to keep in mind. Having said that, I really like this uh, black color and it's very comfortable for long listening sessions. Now with respect to ANC, what I noticed is that we use the foam tips and for some odd reason, the fit wasn't great in my ears and the ANC performance wasn't very good. But the moment I switched to these silicon tips, which I found somewhere, they sort of improved the ANC performance immediately uh, by leaps and bounds. And the ANC on the Sony WF-1000XM5 is superb. It's fantastic. It actually is better, I feel, compared to the AirPods Pro 2. The reason for that is because it does higher frequency attenuation slightly better. So if you have somebody talking next to you, maybe it can cut out some of those sounds as well. Not entirely, but it does a good job of it. So Sony, good job on the ANC performance. But more importantly, what I want to talk about is the sound tuning by default has become way better now. With the WF-1000XM4, what I faced was that it was slightly muddy and uh, it was boomy with respect to the bass, but that's not a problem with the WF-1000XM5. It's cleaner. Don't get me wrong, it still is bass leaning, but it's cleaner and it's more refined. So you get a lot of 
treble uh, in the sound and you get a lot of uh, you know imaging that is very well done as well it's refined it's rich there's very little distortion it sounds very very good if you ask me now the bass sort of masking the other frequencies especially the mids is a problem with the default tuning so for example in muddat by ali sethi and nicholas jar fantastic track you guys should go check it out in that when ali sethi starts singing and when he's singing and there's a bass uh, you know underlying bass note in the background it sort of masks his sound but a little bit of eq tuning can fix that very easily now the sony w6005 also has a few other party tricks up its sleeve for example if you have head gesture control on you can actually shake your head to uh, you know switch off calls or take calls it's kind of gimmicky but it works so it's okay the other thing that really impressed me with the 1000xm5 is definitely the battery performance you know what i got in a recent uh, flight to london which is about 9 hours long i got the proper 9 hours of battery backup from the earbuds themselves that's really really good and this is with anc on mind you so that's very good so good job on the battery life good job on the anc good job on the sound as well but here's the question should you spend 25000 rupees for a pair of truly wireless earbuds i'm not so sure if you have that kind of money uh, you can because you will get the most premium product for your uh, you know money so that's there however i still think that the maximum ceiling for buying a pair of truly wireless earbuds should be 10000 rupees uh, but yeah, i mean if you if you still want to indulge in splurge this is not a bad option at all in fact it's very very good all right my intention with this video was to introduce you to the breadth of you know audio products that are actually available in our country this is some really really good products and definitely worth your time and effort to sort of search and look for for example did you you know ever think uh, that you know you would get 1800 rupee earphones that sound much better than 10000 rupee earphones like iems to be more specific so yeah that's the kind of quality that's available today in india and moreover i want to elevate your listening experience as well i know that music unites us in india we all listen to a lot of music so i mean i really want you guys to listen to your favorite tunes with the best audio products don't go and buy anything cheap and that doesn't sound good get the good products for your money it's totally you know worth that effort to put in save some money and you know sort of buy these good products as well i hope this video was useful and i'm what i'm going to be doing is also linking uh, my apple music playlist in the description below so go and check that out hopefully you can find some tracks that you prefer but generally if you're testing any audio product have a, a set of tracks that you listen to continuously and know really well so that you can figure out whether you like uh, a particular product or not anyway i hope to do more of these this is just the episode 1 uh, if if we get a good response definitely we'll do more of this and continue well and i'll see you guys in the next one until then keep tracking and stay safe